Welcome to Mount Olive Baptist Church, where we are a caring church, building family through transformational ministry. We invite you to worship with us virtually every Sunday at 10 a.m. Although we are not present in the building, we are still worshiping the Lord at home as we continue to follow safety guidelines. Join in with us and hear our amazing praise and worship team and the powerful words. Check us out at go to mobe.com. We can't wait to see you. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I will say of the Lord that he is good and his mercy endure for all generations. We welcome you this morning here on the third Sunday, amen, of August 2021, amen, to lift up the name of Jesus here at the Mount Island Baptist Church where our pastor, Eric Wallace Sr., amen, will be bringing forth the word. We pray that you would share and like this video and that you would get your Bibles and get ready to lift up the name of Jesus to worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Bible says in these last days that God is looking for those that worship him and worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is looking for you to open up your Bibles, lift up your hands, clap, shout, whatever you do in your home or, or if you're on the job or wherever you're watching this video, amen, we ask that you would join in in the fellowship and lift up the name of Jesus. We thank you for your attentiveness and we pray that you would continue to follow this video throughout and worship God, amen, and praise him. And we'll so, be so very careful to give God all the praise, honor, and glory. So God bless you and keep you and heaven smile upon you. That is our prayer. And now we'll have our scripture and after the scripture, we'll have our prayer. Good morning, I greet you in the name of the Lord. I'll be reading Numbers 21, verses 1, 2, and 3. And when King Arab, the Canaan, which dwelt in the south, heard tell of the Israel come by the way of the spies, then he fought against Israel and took them off prisoners. And Israel vowed to vow unto the Lord and said, if thou wilt indeed deliver his people unto my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of the place Hormah. I have read Numbers verses 1, 2, and 3. May God have a blessing to the word and the hearing of his word. we bow in the word of prayer. Oh, Father God, oh, God. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our coming in and not going out, Lord. Father, we just thank you for being in your presence one more time. Yes. Father, we thank you for our pastor, Father. We thank you for, we ask you to be with him and strengthen him today, God. Father, we ask you to be with the Mile Island Baptist Church congregation, Lord. Be with us, strengthen us, God. Yes, God. Lord, we just thank you for the musicians they thought it was not robbery to be here today, God, to lift up and glorify your holy name, Father. We just pray that your mercy and your grace and your Jesus. blessings rest on this house, God. Amen. Oh, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy of all glory and of all honor and all praise, Lord. Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. God, we ask you to create in us a clean heart and renew our right spirit within us. Yes, God. Oh God, we need you in a mighty way, God. We can do nothing without you, Lord. Oh God, we need you, Father. We can't do anything without you, Lord. Help us, Lord, in our daily struggles, Lord. Help us with the things that we go through. Help us with our decision making. Help us with our choices, God. Help us, Lord, when we step out and do the wrong thing, God. 
Help us and restore us, God, back to the place that we need to be, God. Oh, Father, we lift up your name. We lift up your holy name right now, God. We come before the throne of grace, God. We come before the throne of your presence. Because you're the only help we know, God. You're the only help we know, God. We struggle every day in our trials and tribulations and the situations that come forth and the decision making we make. Help us, God. Help us to make the right choices, God. Help us to make the right decisions, God. Help us to be holy and sanctified in your sight, God. Oh, Father, we ask you to come into the midst of us. You say, with two or three are gathered in your name, you be right there in the midst of us, God. We need you, Lord. We need you in a mighty way, God. Oh, Father, continue to come yes, and look on, on my olive, God. Lead us and guide us, Lord. Direct our path, God. Be in the midst of your people, God. Yes, God. Bless your people, God. Bless this house. Anoint this house. Bless your servants in this house, God. Bless the ministry in this house, God. Yes, Bless the leadership in this house, God. Yes, oh, Father, be with us. Lead us and guide us, God. Oh, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for another day. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the gathering together of the saints, God, that we may not be robbery, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we just thank you for your word, God. Your word that's true all by itself. Help us to live by that, Lord. Help us to live by your word. Oh, God, search our hearts right now, God. Search your hearts, God, right now, Lord. Anything that's not like you, Remove it. Take it out right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Father, we just thank you. We love you today, God. We love you. We praise you today. Hallelujah. We thank you today. Hallelujah. We glorify you today. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you're worthy to be praised, God. We pray you're worthy to be praised, God. We ask you to touch every ministry here today, God. Touch every leader here today, God. Touch every minister and leader in this church today, God. Touch the congregation in this day, Lord. Oh, Father, touch the saints today, God. Touch the children today, God. Be in the midst of the community today, Lord. Let us be a light that sit up on top of the hill, God, that glorify your name. Let the people, when they look at my hollow Baptist church, let them see a church that glorify your name, that praise your name, that bless your name, God. Oh, Father, we cannot do it without you, Lord. We can't do it without your Holy Spirit, God. Give us a new Fill up your spirit, God. Give us a double portion of your Holy Spirit, God. Let us be led by your spirit and your grace and your mercy, God. Lead us by your spirit, God. Direct us by your spirit, God. Speak to our hearts and minds, God. Let us know what you have us to do. And Lord, we continue to seek your face and we continue to bow down to you, Lord, and praise and glorify your holy name and come before you in prayer and thanksgiving. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. Good morning, good morning. Come on and let's give God some praise. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. God did create this day. Hallelujah. And that's enough to get us excited. Amen. We want to welcome you to the Island Baptist Church here in the city of Plainfield. We're excited that you decided to join us this morning. We ask for all of our web worshipers that you like this video and share it. Turn our message and continue to spread. Hallelujah. How many of you love the Lord? I mean, truly, truly love the Lord. You love to praise and you love to worship him. Hallelujah. We love the Lord on this day. And we just want to say the Lord.
worship experience here in the month of August, this third Sunday, we welcome you in the matchless, mighty, majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Listen, it's giving time. It's time to bring our tithes and our offerings into the storehouse. So as Malachi said, there will be meat in God's house. We want to come bring in our tithes and our offering, our gifts. We want to bring them to the Lord because we understand that he is number one and that we honor God with all of our substance when we decide to give unto the Lord. Amen. I pray you would join me today in our giving. There's a few ways you can give. You can give by number one, by coming by the church and dropping your envelope off in the box. Please, when you drop it in the box, push it all the way into the box or you can come on Sunday morning and drop it off here at the church to a trustee or a deacon or you can mail your offering in to 216 Liberty Street here in the beautiful city of Plainfield, the Queen City. You can also go online and give by Cash App. Our Cash App sign is money sign go the number two MOBC. Money sign go number two MOBC or you can go to Givelify and look up the Mahalo Baptist Church in Plainfield and you'll be able to give there and also do it recurrently on that site. Amen. So God bless you. However the Lord leads you and moves you to participate this morning, do it even right now. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. The scholarship ministry is seeking donations of school supplies to support our annual back to school supplies giveaway to be held in early September. Donations can be dropped off at the church on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. 
on August 7th, August 14th, and August 21st. The Scholarship Ministry thanks you in advance for your donations. Union County tenants and landlords are able to now apply for utility relief and rent relief. Please visit ucnj.org backslash rental dash assistance for further details and application. The United Way of Greater Union County has a family support and prevention program that's open to all Union County residents with children under the age of 18. They can help with health issues or if children are struggling with school issues. Please contact Sydney Pentland at 908-353-7171 extension 130 if you are interested in this program. Pre-K enrollment for Plainfield residents is now open at the Second Street Youth Center at 200 Plainfield Avenue. For more information about registering for pre-K ages three to five years, call 908-561-0003. The pre-K program is free. And just a reminder, all services for the remainder of August will be live streamed on Sunday mornings. There will be no in-person services again until Sunday, September 12th, when we resume in-person and Sunday school. Thank you. forward to sharing this word with you come on hallelujah come on just clap your hands as a musician plays and turn to numbers chapter 21 verse 4 5 4 and 5 and 6 we're going to read numbers 21 beginning at verse 4 all right come on just clap the hands while they're playing 
grab your Bible at home, wherever you are, in your kitchen, in your living room, or be sitting on the side of your bed while you're grabbing your Bible. Go to Numbers chapter 21 and meet me at verse number four. Come on, clap your hands. Come on. Clap your hands with me. Amen. Thank you so very much. I want to share with you on this morning with the help of the Holy Ghost out of Numbers chapter 21, verse number five. Um, as we begin to look, that's our focal verse, but we're gonna begin reading at verse number four. I wanna share with you about discouragement. This discouragement, how to deal with discouragement. Somebody say how to deal with discouragement. Come on y'all, someone say it. Say that to the kitchen table, say it at your dining room table, in your living room. Come on, say it, how to deal with discouragement. How to deal with discouragement, discouragement. Amen. Uh, Numbers 21, let's begin at verse number four. Amen. I want to thank our praise team, our musicians, amen, and our little quartet that sung on this morning. Amen. Come on, clap it up for them. Amen on today to the God is worthy. Um, the scripture does say always be ready because you never know the day nor the hour. Amen. And you should always be ready. Numbers 21 beginning at verse number four. We we'll thank De uh, Brother uh, uh, our Deacon in training uh, Ron Richardson for reading the first three verses. Amen. Amen. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much, what? Discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God. And the people spake against God. And against Moses. Wherefore have you, ye, brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathe this light bread. Verse 6, And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent and set upon a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 We want to talk about how to deal with discouragement for these few moments that are ours on this morning, because we believe that God is a God that wants us, amen, not to be discouraged. God simply, God surely sends uh, difficulties our way for nothing comes into our lives without first going past the throne of God. Help me hear somebody. Have, have you ever felt like you were on your own journey, a wilderness wandering? Have you ever felt like that you were going through a season that you were in a desert, dry, and dissolute place? Have you ever been there where you felt like uh, that you were in a no, non-ending circle 
and felt like you were so discouraged that you were ready to die. I, I want to submit to all of you listening to me on this morning that you really have never faced true discouragement until that discouragement has caused you to question even the reason that you exist. Wow, wow, wow. When you've been through that type of situation, when you look back at life, when you look back at a decision or an event that transpired, that caused pain, not only to you, but to others, yeah. discouragement is soon to follow. Discouragement is, can be debilitating. Discouragement can be difficult. But God wants us to know how to deal with discouragement. I hope you're interested in this morning. If, if you would, just like it and share it. and we'll Invite somebody else in the room with us. Because here we are, and the Israelites had witnessed all these miracles, these these incredible miracles. They, they have been delivered from death. Watch this. Israel had been delivered from death on that night of Passover. They had seen miracles, y'all. They have been delivered from slavery out of Egypt and passed through the Red Sea, not on muddy ground, but on dry ground. They had seen miracles, y'all. They, they had even uh, seen miracles uh, of how God drowned the horses in the Red Sea. Now, I know when y'all read that, you didn't think that was a miracle, but the Bible said that the horses drowned also. And anybody who knows horses, they are very good swimmers, and it's difficult to drown a horse. Wow. So what he's saying, that God was in control. They had seen miracles. And even as they had wandered in the wilderness, they were wandering in this wilderness, y'all. But because of their rebellion, uh, they were being led, uh, and they didn't even realize it because of the rebellion. They didn't realize that a miracle was taking place every day. Come on, somebody. Because it was a miracle that they had a cloud by day with all and stunning pillar of fire at night. They had a miracle, y'all. They had witnessed miracles, but it wasn't enough for them because God, even though God was feeding his children, y'all, every day with bread that fell down from heaven, they had seen miracles and yet they were not satisfied. And I wanted to question our own hearts today and our own intentions because we complain over and over again. We always have something negative to say and we overlook all the miracles God gives us every day. Even while I was sharing this sermon so far this morning, God has produced miracles in you right now. You didn't make your heart beat. You didn't make your eyes blink. You didn't make your, your, your nose and lungs take a breath. It was God's hand producing a miracle in you this morning. Come on, somebody. And too often we overlook what God has done. Can I tell you, he performed a miracle for you last night because while you laid in your bed you were 95 percent dead but god woke you up this morning without an alarm clock he woke you up this morning in the rightness of your mind and somebody ought to say thank you Glory, hallelujah, and here's Israel. Israel has been seeing God, incredible miracles, one after another. But isn't this just like us, the human psyche? You all know, it's just like us. We forget the good things God has done for us on yesterday. <laughs> have I got a witness? We like to sing that song, what have you done for me lately? What have you done? Done. We have a way of forgetting yesterday's blessing. You're worried about tomorrow. Tomorrow sufficient to take care of itself. And it, did God take care of you today? If God took care of you today, he can take care of you on tomorrow. 
Somebody say hallelujah. He'll take care of you. He'll watch over you. He keeps on blessing you today. But what we end up doing, we forget yesterday's blessing because we become immersed in today's burdens. I wish somebody would just put that on the screen, chat that, tweet it. We miss out and forget on yesterday's blessings when we become too immersed in today's burdens. Just because life is sending you something difficult doesn't mean you have to forget what God has already done. The reason why you have the job is because God made a way out of no way. The reason why you have your health and strength is because God healed you when you thought you weren't going to make it and you've been so immersed in what the doctors say, what the news is saying. You forget what God said. And I don't know about you, I'm willing to take God's word over ABC, Fox News, RW11. I will take the word of God and say I will stand on it until the day I die. And so here we are. So Moses records this in Numbers 21.4. He said the people became discouraged. It's right here in the text. They, they, they became much discouraged. The, King, the New King James says very discouraged. What did they do when they became discouraged? They took it out on Moses and even God himself. Talk to me, somebody. They came, they came to Moses shaking their fingers in his face and their fists saying, why? 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 Have you brought us up out of Egypt? See, then their frustration burst forth and they said this, right? Just to die in this God-forsaken wilderness. Their frustration burst forth as they're asking, why have you brought us out of Egypt simply to die? They are discouraged, y'all. Somebody say with me, discouraged. And I need to tell you, too often we find ourselves walking in the shoes of the Israelites. I know you're not going to say amen, but I'm going to preach it anyway, how God gave it to me. We find ourselves walking in the shoes of the Israelites when life seems to be going all right. When you have some money in the bank and you have a little uh, uh, a car in the driveway and a job to go to and we don't appreciate how good we really had it. Then all of a sudden we find ourselves with no direction. Next thing you know we see problems mounting all around us. We see trouble coming all around us and it seems like there's no way out and we start to pour the finger at God and ask the question why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? God why did you bless me just to take it away? But I need to tell you somebody needs to declare like Job did who says I believe the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. I thank you. Somebody who can testify. He says that. Then he says, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait and I will trust in the Lord. I will make sure that I stand firm to what God is saying. Because I can't just praise him when everything is going all right. But I have to know how to praise him when things aren't going so good. When I'm discouraged, can you praise him? And so let me tell you, see, discouragement can have a devastating and debilitating effect on our lives. Have a got a witness? Uh, uh, and Moses, I believe, recorded this story with all for all posterities to reveal the reason that there's discouragement and the results of discouragement and also give us the remedies of discouragement, the reason for discouragement, the result of, risk of uh, discouragement, and then the remedy for discouragement. We're going to learn how to get out of this discouragement. What do you do when it comes? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because this is an example for us. You always remember 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. Paul reminds us that all these things in the New Testament, I mean the Old Testament happened to the children of Israel as what? Examples. And they were written for ad admonition. 
which means for our teaching. They are school lessons for us to learn something about God and ourselves. First Corinthians 10, 11, in case you need to read that later. But that's what, when you read the word of God, the word of God is an example and written to teach us a lesson. What does it teach us, Ron? What is it saying to us? First of all, let me give you, there's a reason for our discouragement. Reason for our discouragement. See, watch this. See, see, it's easy. It's easy to forget um, uh, where we've been. It's easy to forget downing where we've been. But let me tell you, it's also easy to forget where we're going. Okay, watch this. See, the reason for discouragement <laughs> in the wilderness is, watch this rhyme, is that it's easy to forget not only where we've been, but it's also easy to forget where we're going. See, when this happens, when we forget not only where we've been, but we forget where we're going, we can allow discouragement to stop us on our journey. But when you remember, can I just give you the New Testament example? Jesus tells his disciples, get in the boat, Venetia, and he says, go to the other side. He says, I will meet you on the other shore. He, on the way to getting to the other side, they encountered a storm in the middle of this lake. In the midst of the storm, they are toiling all night long. They are discouraged. They are fighting. They are stuck in one place. But God comes to them and rescues them. Watch this. On the way of going to where they were going, they never stopped rowing. Even though the storm wouldn't allow them to go forward, watch this. They never stopped rowing. Why? Because Jesus said, I'll meet you on the other shore. That just tells me me here today and let you know that no matter what you're going through, no matter what, what you're facing, I need you to know this, keep on rowing because if God said go to the other shore, don't you forget where you're going. Don't allow discouragement to distract you to a point that you give up in the middle of your journey, that you throw down your sword, take your hands off the gospel plow and decide to go home. No, I'm not only going to remember what he saved me from, but I'm going to remember what he saved me to. Y'all to talk to somebody in your room, somebody on your row, or somebody in the next room and say, I am remembering the promise God has given me. And I know in these 17 months, it's been hard to see where we've been going. Every time you think we're going to go forward, we get news we're going backwards. Every time we think things are getting better, we find out things are really getting worse. And I know that your future and where we're going has become fuzzy and somewhat dreary. The fog is rising from the ground of your expectation. But I come by here today to tell you, no matter matter what the outside conditions look like, remember you are operating under a promise. Somebody say under a promise. Oh, we only have eyes for now. When we only can see now. When you only can see what you're going through. When you only have eyes and focus on what you are looking at. When we have all these complexities swirling around us and we only have one way of demanding our immediate, and it has a way, I'm sorry, of demanding our immediate focus. And when what's swirling around us, when it demands our focus, it refuses our discouragement. And so when troubles come, watch this, you got to remember where you're going, because you can only look at where you're at now. Now will <laughs> fuel and focus your discouragement. The Israelite discouragement boiled down to the fact that they didn't like two things. Y'all ready for this? Two things. They didn't like, in this text I saw, they didn't like how they were being led and they didn't like how they were being fed. Somebody said they didn't like how they were being led and they didn't like how they were being fed. Ah, these chosen people of God, they complained 
Oh, yeah, Carrie, they complained. First, they complained about the way they were being led. Can I talk to somebody here today? They began to murmur against Moses. Have I got a witness? And that happens when discouragement comes. The first thing you would notice is people will start to look for someone to blame. And most of the time, when they're looking for someone to blame, they start to blame the God-given leader. Come on, somebody. Help me here. They'll blame the pastor. They'll blame the deacons. They'll blame the president of the ministry, the chairperson. Always looking for someone else to blame. They don't ever take the blame. They never use self-reflection or critical thinking to say, maybe it's me. Maybe I need to do something because I realize that my church can never be better than who I am. The church can never go further than what I'm willing to go because the church is not just one body part. We all are the body of Jesus Christ. The, UK, the foot has to stop blaming the kneecap and the kneecap has to stop blaming the elbow. And the elbow has to stop blaming the nose and the nose has to stop blaming the ear and when they all start to work together something can happen somebody said they began to complain about the way they were being led even though they murmured against Moses can I tell y'all their real complaint was against God himself because really Moses all he is He's simply following what God told him. He's doing what God said. He's, he's just relaying God's instructions to the people. But they didn't like Moses' leadership. What did they do? Y'all, they rebelled. They rebelled because they, didn't, they did not like the way Moses was leading them. So not only did they complain about the way they were led, they also complained about the way they were fed. Look at Numbers 21 verse 5. It says, our soul loathes this worthless bread. Mm, the manna the people hated. New King James Version However, huh, the manna was God's gift, gracious gift of substance to these thousands and millions of people who were without a food supply. Every morning when they got up, manna was there waiting for them. And they complained. They said, God, we don't want this as worthless. Uh, we don't want to eat this bread from heaven. We don't like how we're being led. We don't like how we're being fed. And later we come to find out that the manna that fell was a picture of Jesus Christ, the bread of life. I just need to tell you when discouragement comes, it has a way of diverting our focus from God. It has a way of diverting our focus away from his blessings. Yeah. And, that, and then it causes us to focus on our circumstance and our situations that swirl around us. The Israelite situation really came down, boiled down to this fact that they did not want God's word through Moses to lead them. They, do, they did not want God's word through Moses to lead them. They did not want God to feed them. That's the bottom line. That's the reason for discouragement. When you look at the root of discouragement, it comes to this point that we really do not want God to lead us through his word. We really do not want to be obedient to the word of God, but St. John recorded under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit the words of Jesus that says, if you love me, do my commandments. In most cases, people who rebel against the word of God, who rebel against God's leadership, they don't want God to feed them. You can preach the word, but they don't 
don't want you to talk about sin. You can preach the word, but the churches will fill up when you're talking about feeling positive, positive thinking and self-motivation. God didn't call us to preach positive thinking and self-motivation. He calls, uh, called us to preach what Paul preached. He says, I know that the power of the gospel, what is the power of the gospel? It is him crucified and risen again. That's the gospel. Can I get a witness? That's what saves people is the blood of Christ. Have I got a, it's not no smoke machines. It's not flashing lights. And I'm not against that. If it works while you get the word out, then do it. But I need to tell you, you can't replace the word of God with any kind of antics. Have I got a witness? You got to preach the word in season and out of season. Help me here, Holy Ghost. That's the situation. They didn't want the word of God through, through Moses to lead them. They didn't want God to feed them. That's the reason. Uh, uh, what is the, the result of discouragement? I'm, I'm going to move on a little. I don't want to hold y'all too long. Um, because discouragement, watch this, when it's left to fester can have devastating results. Amen. When discouragement is left to unattended when it's not dealt with will always have devastating results ask these any one of these jews in the wilderness what happened they learned that when they openly rebelled against the authority of god i just need to tell you when they rebelled against god's leadership when they rebelled against god's provision in their lives Something happened. What happened? God disciplined them for their own benefit. I know we don't like talking about it, but God will discipline us. Have I got a witness? God will send things in our lives to correct our open rebellion against God. We don't want to hear what God says. We don't want to do what God has told us. And when God has put a leader in the place to lead you, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear God's word. We don't care what God said to him. We are openly rebellion, rebelling against God, even though we think we're rebelling only against Moses uh, or the leader, but really, in effect, God sent the person, whomever he or she may have may be, and because God sent them, then God has called us to follow him through them. Come on, somebody. And if we do not, when we rebel, rebel against God caring and God's leadership and provision, he will send discipline in our lives. I know y'all don't like this, but look in verse number six. The Bible says the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Let me say it again. Because somebody missed that. It says the Lord, not Moses, sent fiery sir. I know Moses probably wanted to because he cussed them out later. But in this particular verse, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Who was it? It was the Lord. I know we don't want to talk about that, but it's right here in the text. I'm not making it up. Numbers 21, verse 6. Put it on the screen if you can. Look what it says. Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And what did the serpents do? They bit the people. <laughs> and many of the people of Israel died. That's verse 6. These are consequences. Somebody say consequences. There are consequences. Hallelujah. When we rebel against the Lord. And you know that the sign of the serpent is a representation and a picture of Satan and sin. The serpent comes slithering up to us to do exactly as he did in the garden. The serpent comes to us because whenever we're living in rebellion, the serpent has an avenue to get to our hearts. Y'all don't hear it? And so the serpent comes and sin comes. I don't understand. But I need to tell you this. In Numbers 21, the serpent's bites were two things. They were terrible and terminal. They were terrible and terminal. Moses said this, that they were fiery. Somebody just shout fiery. And even in the sanctuary, shout fiery. Help me preach this if y'all would. And when they bit, apparently, every 
every nerve in the body of a person who was a part of the Israelite group uh, begin to feel like the entire body was on fire. Can you imagine being thrown in the oven and you couldn't get out? This is what kind of pain they had. They were like they were on fire and couldn't be cooled off. Every nerve was turned into a burning ember. The pain was excruciating and, the, and all of this happened because of their open disobedience to the Lord. And I can I just tell you, sin is just like that. Sin, it has results that will burn you. Proverbs said, can a man take fire into his bosom and not be burned? I'm amazed that some people have this idea, y'all, that sin is enjoyable and harmless. I don't understand how you think sin is harmless. No, let me tell you. It's not harmless in the long run. It may be pleasure for a moment, but it's not fun. Can I get a witness? Sin always has consequences. Those consequences are often painful. Those consequences are often hurtful. And simply put, according to Proverbs 13, 15, Reverend Downey, this is what it says. The way of the unfaithful is hard. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. It's not easy. It's terrible. I need to tell you, it's terrible. Sin is terrible, but not only is it terrible, but the bites were also terminal. Look what it says. It says that many of the people of Israel died in verse 6. What God reveals here, remember what I read in 1 Corinthians 10, that this is an example, an admonition. To teach us something about God and something about ourselves. God revealed here, as he does everywhere else in scripture, watch this, that death is the ultimate end of sin and rebellion against God. How does God put down sin and rebellion? Death is the ultimate answer, right? So Romans 6.23 says, and the wages of sin is death. Death. James also, uh, centuries later, will write to the Jerusalem church, will write to the diaspora of the Jews. Uh, he said this in chapter 1. Each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. That when the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth Death. Somebody ought to say that is the result of discouragement. It can be terrible and it can be terminal. If you don't deal with it, it will be terrible and be terminal. I'm done. Let me give you my last point and hurry back to my seat. Hallelujah. Not only did I want to talk to you about the reason for discouragement. I wanted to talk to you about the result of discouragement, but let me tell you how to deal with discouragement and give you the remedy for discouragement. It won't take long. I'm out of here. After I say this, I pray that you were blessed on today, that you heard something that helped you, that will help you or may help you now along the way. The people learned their lesson and they changed their mind, right? They, they were getting bit by these serpents and they learned their lesson and change their mind. What did they do? They ran to Moses. That just kills me. They were talking about him for one minute but they're running to him the next. I just need to tell you, whoever you are in leadership, don't worry when they talk about you. They may talk about you on Sunday. You have to pray for them in the hospital on Monday. Don't you worry about it. You put it in the hands of God. You don't play God. You let God be God. Have I got a witness they ran to Moses and said, we have all sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Watch this in verse 7. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpent from us. Good God. Moses did pray in response to Moses' prayer. God told him something. Hold on, not yet. God told him something very strange. He told him, Go make a bronze serpent and place it on the pole and lift it high in the air. When the people looked at the serpent, come on, somebody, they would live. They were discouraged. They they had this, they were discouraged. 
discouraged because how they were being led. They were discouraged because how they were being fed. Their discouragement was terminal and they dis their discouragement was terrible. Oh, but here they are asking Moses for help. We're discouraged. We made a mistake. We're rebelling against God. We turned our back on God. What can we do? He says, I'm going to hold this up. And when I hold it up, it's going to heal your people. Oh my God. It sounds strange, but I need to give you this. It was a sure remedy. It was a sure remedy. Why was it a sure remedy? How do you know it was going to work, Pastor? It was going to work because God told Moses to do it. So again, God had Moses lead them and give them the word that God wanted to give to his people. So now in order for them to live, they had to get another word from Moses and now become obedient to the same one they said they didn't want to listen to anymore. Can you see how God works that? In? Here's a way to be cured. God gave him the remedy. It's a sure remedy. Here is a way to be cured. He revealed the only way. Moses didn't tell him. You can, here's a way to be cured. Maybe you can go through Gandhi or maybe you can go through the 3,000 gods of the Hindu religion. Maybe you can go by Buddha. Or maybe you can just go and do your own thing in self meditation but Moses did not say that he didn't say there was any way you could be cured he said there was only one way I just stopped by the day to tell you and I have a, enough audacity to say it flat footed there's only one way you can be saved and that's by the name of Jesus Christ you can't get around any other way he says I am the way the truth and the life that's a sure remedy. He's the only way. If you want to get healed from discouragement, it's only one way. The way is Jesus Christ. Have I got a witness? He revealed that Jesus is the only way. Hallelujah. Not only is it a sure way, but watch this. It is a sufficient remedy. I feel like preaching here. It is a sufficient remedy. What do you mean? It didn't matter where a person was bitten. It didn't matter how many times they had been bitten. Can I get a witness here? Because no matter if they have been bitten 30 seconds ago or 30 minutes ago, if they were still walking or they were dealing with fever, but wherever, wherever they were at, all they had to do was take a look and the remedy was sufficient. So no matter where they were, no matter what condition it worked, it was sufficient because God's way will always work. Come here, somebody, and you can testify. I tried to do it my way. Yes, I did, but I'm glad to testify that when I did it God's way, it turned out the right way, and finally, bid you farewell, goodbye, you can get a bowl of cereal, enjoy another egg, but before I go, not only is it a sure remedy, not only is it a sufficient remedy, but finally it's a sustaining remedy. It never failed. Somebody ought to shout with me. When you look at the bronze serpent, serpent you lived. And that's exactly what it's like today. When they looked, can I get a witness? It saved their lives. 
they lived and not to die and to leave have a go in this I need to tell somebody in the 21st century you need to remember that when Jesus was on the road to Emmaus and he met two men and he said to them beginning at Moses he explained to them all that the scriptures the things concerning himself he started with Moses I wonder if he started with the small serpent can I get a witness I believe that he reminded them of the healing of the serpent that when the brown serpent, serpent had been lifted up above the people it brought healing and Jesus wanted them to know that in the middle of your wilderness that in the middle of your discouragement don't you give up cause I heard John say in chapter 3 uh, and verse 14 uh, as Moses uh, lifted up the serpent uh, in the wilderness uh, even so uh, must the son of man uh, be lifted up uh, that whosoever uh, believes in him uh, should not perish uh, but have uh, everlasting life uh, can I get a witness? And just the other Friday, it was Jesus. He was lifted high on a Roman cross so that all could see him. And to this day, everyone that looks to him for healing from the sins, everyone that looks to him for salvation, you'll find he will heal your body, he'll give you life and life more abundantly, he'll give you life eternal. Can I get a witness? How much clearer can the remedy be? The remedy is that you were to die, but die you were to do for our sin is sure. But Christ is not a way. Can you help me say he is the only way? Because the remedy is sufficient. I need to tell you, I don't care how much you sin. I, I don't care how much you messed up. I don't care how many babies you had, how much drug you use. I don't care what your life has seen. I need to tell you that his the remedy is sufficient. Have a good witness. He is able to forgive you and save you. I don't care how sin may have bit you, but I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, the Lord will sustain you, but no one has ever looked to God to be saved, and God turned them away. The Lord said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, And let him take your discouragement. Come again with this. As I leave you, I'm going to ask you a question. How do we reach?
reach the masses of men of every birth for an answer. Jesus gave the key. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, we'll draw. You didn't hear me today. We'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Still, he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. I'll draw. I'll draw. All men unto me. All the world is hungry for the living bread. Let the Savior up for them to see. Trust him and do not doubt the words that he said. How draw. Hallelujah. Sufficient. And this is your discouragement. God's remedy is sufficient. Take your eyes off all your circumstances. Focus on Jesus. Huh. He was lifted up on that Roman cross. Suffered, bled, and died on the Pontius Pilate. Buried in that grave. But on the third day, he got up with all power. Thank you, Thank you, I don't know where your sin has you today. I don't know where sin has you. And because we're broadcasting this, this could find you maybe incarcerated, maybe in hospital. Or maybe in some other debilitating circumstance or situation. And you say it's too late. I heard what you said, but you don't know what kind of sin I am. Well, can I tell you, the one who wrote this, he was a murderer. Yes, yes. And yet God used him to become... A great leader of his people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Doesn't matter where you're at. What God has provided for your healing is sufficient for everything. Well, well. Come today. This is your moment. Give your life to Christ. Please call, write, email me. Go to our website. Uh, go to MOBC.com. The number two. Go to MOBC.com. Send us a message. Let us know. Wherever you're at, please connect with a Bible-believing, Bible-living, Bible-teaching church so that you can grow in power and in grace. God bless you. Listen, I love you. I love you. May God be with you and go with you this week. Just remember, when discouragement comes, don't allow your burdens of your present to drown out your blessings of yesterday. And don't forget, God has given you a promise about your future. God bless.